The youngest among the 10 APPCU laureates is John Nicolo Frederick Fernandez, also known as Teacher John Lucas and That Crazy Fun Teacher is a 51 Talk Teacher brand ambassador who has been on the platform for over three years. He creates videos about Chinese culture and collaborates on his video projects with his Chinese students. He is also very popular in China on his Bilibili channel which has thousands of followers. He serves as a director for JNF Studios from 2013 to the present. His passion for teaching made him become an online sensation in China because of his cool and engaging antics while conducting lessons. He loves to incorporate and promote Chinese culture into his videos. He made videos of making Chinese food during Chinese New Year and did some cosplay of some Chinese celebrities on his social media accounts on YouTube and Facebook as that crazy fun teacher. John Fernandez has been traveling to China many times since 2019. In one of his travels, his team competed in Beijing for the Sina 5-star teachers competition and clinched the 5-star teacher award because of their unique and engaging teaching techniques. His warm interactions with students made him an active advocate of student-centered learning. This significant attribute of his personality is seen through his creative videos on his students' birthdays, movie dubbing shows, and tongue twisters with Chinese students. Thank you, Raven. Friends and colleagues, let us welcome our second resource speaker for today's APCO Forum. One of the laureates or awardees of the 2021 Awards for Promoting Philippine China Understanding or APPCU and the former 5-1 Talk brand ambassador, Mr. John Nicolo Friedrich Fernandez. John, take it away. In a nutshell, the Ch China's double reduction policy came to be, you know, in order to ease the financial burden of education on Chinese families and reduce the family support for education to a reasonable level, thus increasing the overall fertility rate. This may be surprising to some who isn't really, who, who isn't really aware, right? So I will not get into the numbers or the stats, but there has been a sharp decline in birth rates in China. Okay, so this, this has been uh, the lowest birth rate in China in over a decade. You know, with Chinese, Chinese people choosing to have smaller families or to have no children at all. Why? Because uh, parents will often and do make extreme sacrifices to ensure their child the private education required and to give their child as much opportunity as possible for their future education and career paths. And of course, due to the cost of these classes, parents have stopped having large families and in some cases have stopped having families altogether. Mm -hmm. So um, believe it or not, this is uh, one of the main reasons why the president of China brought in the ban. Okay, now let's uh, get into some policy details. Mm -hmm. This is you know, a good, good information for online ESL teachers like me. So the affected age groups are uh, the preschoolers, students in compulsory education, and high school students. And let's talk about their uh, their training time. Mm -hmm. So they are not allowed to train in any in any way. Uh, not allowed in public holidays, rest days, or winter and summer holidays. And their daily training must be completed before twenty one hundred hours Beijing time. ESL companies in China are uh, in China is not allowed to. They are not allowed to employ foreigners abroad to carry out online training activities. So this brings us to our online ESL industry, which is a hundred billion dollar industry. So this massive uh, industry shift uh, has changed the infrastructure of the online ESL industry. Mm -hmm. And there are about there are about thirty three companies that have been affected or more than 30 companies that have been affected by this and i'll name the notable ones they are the they are the companies that are also well known in our country so namely palfish magic ears i tutor group go go kid vip kid panda abc and of course the company where i came from five one talk five one not 51 <laughs> 
Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, just a bit of uh, uh, information about the stock price of Five One Talk. So, the stock price plummeted uh, about thirty two point one percent just within a week of the implementation of this uh, new policy. Uh, each of these companies have uh, thousands and thousands of Filipino online ESL teachers. So, obviously, or as you may know, employment in the Philippines is not easy, especially for women who need to take care of their families. So, uh, statistics show that the average that the average monthly salary in the Philippines is about thirteen thousand eight hundred pesos. Okay, but until twenty eighteen, only forty six point six percent of women in the Philippine in the Philippines entered the labor market. So this year, uh, while researching, the minimum wage in the Philippines is 537 pesos a day. Okay, so if you are being paid right, you, you may get paid more or less this amount, 537 pesos, but you can earn it in just an hour. So imagine the help that it brings to thousands and thousands of Filipino online ESL teachers, you know, especially the, let's say housewives, they can, they can earn a good amount on the side by doing this. And especially now that everyone's livelihood has been affected by this pandemic, and just like that, everything has been taken away. But not only the, the money, it, it also took away the, the bond and friendship that has been formed by countless students, parents, Chinese students, parents, and Filipino teachers. And without, without these online ESL companies, most of us will probably never ha would have met these amazing people in China. Mm -hmm. So up next, I had the privilege of interviewing some Chinese parents uh, about their thoughts on the double reduction policy. And uh, here's what they had to say in bullet points. So uh, the first one, uh, the first one is Carrie. She is from Guangzhou, a parent from Guangzhou. Her daughter is also my student. And their only chance to practice their spoken English is with foreigners. And it's a good way of learning English speaking with foreigners and uh, there are obviously there are a few foreigners in China so no English environment and the importance of English for her is you know Chinese uh, Chinese people often contact foreigners for business she told me a very quick story there's this woman who's uh, who's good in her job but doesn't know a word of English so she cannot present something with their foreign clients so that's why she didn't have the chance to get promoted, right? So kind of a big deal over there. And the next one is uh, Jojo from Ningbo, a parent. Her daughter is also my student. So yeah, they save a lot of money because there's no extra classes to be paid anymore. But their grades are much lower than last year, which gives them anxiety. Mm -hmm. Because I think you need to, the student needs to reach a certain grade in order to go to college. If you don't reach that grade, you will not go to college anymore. So maybe that's new to you know some online ESL teachers. Okay, and for Connie uh, from Guangzhou, like Carrie, her son is my student also, and she is my student as well. And uh, she said, you don't know if the kids are learning because there are less exams. And Chinese English teachers focus only on writing and listening. But foreigners, it's more focused on speaking. Uh, last but not the least, this is Lolly from Huizhou. She is my student, a parent, and uh, her daughter as well. So online is good. It's convenient. Obviously, you can do it anytime, anywhere, and even the smallest city can have a foreign teacher that easy. And Chinese people are good on paper, but not in speaking. Kids cannot have classes on weekends. Thus, less getting less uh, less skills and like I said before, if they don't reach a certain grade, they cannot be able to go to college. And uh, in, order to, in order to speak English well, it's better to have a foreign teacher, not a Chinese English teacher. And uh, I don't know if this sounds funny, but the only chance to use English in China is to tell a foreigner where to go in their city. All right, so that's their only practice. Mm -hmm. So just imagine if they don't have uh, foreign English teachers anymore uh an, an additional thing is uh that they said is they are still hiring private tutors for certain subjects so they are still you know spending extra money <laughs> it's not extra classes but 
you know, still spending extra extra money for, you know, private tutors. So it, they say it's like virtually the same, but only harder for them. Mm -hmm. So that's that's all. That's all. I hope uh, I shed a light to some people, some especially teach online ESL teachers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Teacher John, for that equally um, informative and very um, much more an experiential based um, presentation of, of your experience, of course, and of other experience of, of ESL teacher, Filipino teachers um, who've been teaching online. And now let's go to question and answer. No, I think the first question would come from, my, from me. This is with regards to ESL teachers. So thus far in your former company, um, John, mm -hmm. um, how many ESL teachers have been affected? And at the same time, in what sense they've been affected? The, and honestly, I don't know the, the statistics, but 5 on Talk has 30,000, over 30,000 teachers. And everyone has been affected and a lot has lost their jobs. Either they quit, they got fired, or uh, the others um, had their salaries decreased mm. dramatically so so it's like different i know different impact in that sense no yes. any comments on the part of mr ong do you have any uh, experience or any other company which have a different experience no, in, in terms of impact uh, on online teacher yes uh, Austin? of course as i shared with you earlier the chinese uh, kids and the parents love the especially once they get to know the filipino teacher uh, so it did get uh, a significant, uh, we, the, the education reform did have a significant impact. Uh, what I heard is uh, more than half, uh, I, I think, were, if not more. Um, but of course, that, that, that is uh, something, to, uh, it's another developing event. Uh, but, but it's actually similar to our uh, call center industry. As we know, uh, if the market is evolving, uh, the call center uh, supply also has to evolve. Otherwise, uh, we're going to be left behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think um uh, the same uh, that the kind of policy is applicable in the Philippines? Not necessarily on ESL teacher because we speak English very well, no. But um in in that similar manner, I mean in educational technology. So do you think this policy is applicable in the Philippines? In what sense? What do you think, Austin? Uh, of, you know, we're, we're Filipinos are we're very social. Uh, I I think it's very hard to if you mean that the online teaching to uh, enhance uh, the Philippines uh, tutorial program, if that's what uh, you mean. We have also online teaching here, yeah. but uh, like math, science, but Correct. not necessarily English, yeah. Correct. But, but I think most of our kids uh, prefer that one-on-one, uh, -on -one. you know, whereas the Chinese kid, if the parent says, go to the online uh, lesson, the kids will not complain, but our kids here have too many uh, freedom. <laughs> so, uh, but, but more interestingly, actually, you know, there's a lot of these... Uh, uh, what do you call it, the AI type uh, tutoring program, you know, so even without this, of course, this education uh, policy uh, fast track the, 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 the changes, no? but, but uh, a lot of these AI uh, programs are also taking over uh, a lot of the online teachers' uh, role. Uh, so it, it's, it's definitely a, 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 an uncertain uh, future. Now, what about you, John? What do you think? Uh, if the Philippines will have their own double reduction policy yeah so, but not necessarily on english teaching because as i've said earlier we are already very fluent in english and i think english is like a second or a first language to us already but mm -hmm. on other aspect like you know uh, it's also happening in the philippines no um like uh, on my hand my kids are always on in on, on online teaching different subject and after classes they also have other tutors and you know, all of these things to be more competitive and be more you know up at par with the rest of kids no in school mm -hmm. so what do you think well the reason the, i think the main really the main reason is the you know increasing the overall fertility rate <laughs> i think we uh -huh. don't have that problem <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so i think so. it's not applicable We're overpopulated in my yeah. opinion <laughs> but yeah just to add uh professor anna also you know it's the result that counts because uh, in the pisa the, the pisa and the pims uh, teams uh, international uh, global ranking on education. Uh, Philippines is we are last in uh, math, science, and in, in reading. No, even if we are, as you said, English-speaking country, but uh, China is in the top three. Uh, uh, 
and and that that shows that the big uh, difference no so actually it's not even the online tutoring program because our education a formal education sector really needs a uh, reform as well that's another uh, that's big... another issue and i think that's another topic yeah the question is what do you think is the advantage of the policy i mean the said policy that we've been discussing um and also the disadvantage uh, of course we have to talk about china well austin i think lived in china and studied in china and you to a certain extent i'm um, john i have visited china many times so what do you think from from your own perspective no from from different backgrounds well the advantage for me is you know i've been teaching for not so long actually but for more than four years already and uh what i've learned is like they're like the kids do homework or schoolwork 24 7 so this policy is a good thing for them they get to rest and you know they get they get to be a kid. <laughs> They're only a kid and for 18 years and after that they they are like us already adults. <laughs> you know, well the disadvantage for them is uh, like like the parents like the parents said uh they, they, like uh I like this like you don't know if the kids are learning because mm-hmm. there are less exams and they they are having less skills actually a lot of I think all of the Chinese kids are really skilled in in something, you know. So with this policy, you know, less time to learn more skills. So that's a disadvantage for me, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you for that. What about you, Austin? What do you think? Um, we're we're looking at it more on the the overall. Uh, oh, the macro. Yeah, the macro, the direction of China. Uh, this education reform is uh, actually part of a bigger package. No, of uh, China going from uh, quantity to quality. No? So they're saying there's a high, high growth uh, even in their economy from a numbers game to a quality uh, game. No? So uh, of course, the, the, the result is yet to be seen, but uh, we have seen this uh, applied also uh, not only in the education reform, but in their economic uh, GDP data, no? in their uh, um, uh, pursuit for economic growth in the last 40 years. Uh, that was at the expense of their environment, on their uh, social uh, cost, and uh, one of that is the the, the uh, declining age, uh, declining population. Uh, so I, I think it also shows that uh, China is uh, evolving, no, or, or um, uh, learning uh, while doing. Uh, at the same time, of course, uh, it, it is painful. Uh, so the, the the those who are affected, like the parents, and of course the the children are probably happier. <laughs> Right, but but it's the parents who worry more about the children. Uh, the parents will find a way, no? As as a uh, enterprising like teacher John or other uh, enterprising teachers, they find their other channels because uh, this uh, uh, economic ref- uh, education reform actually um, does not prohibit uh, foreigners from uh, having their own arrangements uh, with the parents on a one to one. So it becomes more of an individual relationship rather than a corporate. Or, or a formal uh, basis, no. So the result is yet to be seen to to uh, assess uh, advantages and disadvantages. But uh, I think it's uh, it all, only means that we have to keep uh, in touch with the developments there and uh, make sure that we are also adjusting uh, along the way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I have last two questions here, but let me ask this question first to John. Since John is, I mean, the former ambassador of Five One Talk. Don't worry, John. Five One Talk, uh, and then um, I actually also again, being an ambassador of Five One Talk. Of course, you've known the company, no, to a greater extent. And I think Five One Talk is also can be categorized or can be, yeah, can be categorized like educational technology companies. So, in what sense do you think um, edtech um, companies? could possibly um, cope up with such a policy in China. Because if you look at China, China is a big market, no? And companies are actually trying to get that market because, so, you know, it, it you generate revenues. So, but in what sense do you think, from your experience being a 5-1 talk ambassador, getting to know the company, its operation, how do you think it, it they can cope up? Would they improve their um, technology? What, what, what do you think is the possibility? And you being also managing a company right now, so in what sense do you think they can cope up with the policy? Uh, actually, the, the companies that I presented, you know, some of them closed down. Some of them uh, huh. are about to close down. But the bigger companies already made the move. They, they are going mm-hmm. global already. And okay. they will, if this, if this policy 
uh, goes on for a long time, you know, they will leave the Chinese market and, uh, you know, uh, cater to baby. other countries. Mm-hmm. What about you, Austin, from your research? And, and of course, you have friends as well in these companies, no? Yes. Uh, as uh, teacher John said, uh, you know, many of them are closing down. The, the ones who are surviving have to evolve. Many of them went into the, they call it the NGO or nonprofit uh, services while they are transitioning. Uh, and you made a good point, Anna, that these are actually considered tech uh, companies also because of, you know, they're, they're basically online uh, providers, uh, uh, online services providers. So uh, we, all, we can also look at this uh, from the, the e-payment uh, sector and, you know, these uh, tele- uh, tech giants that, that China also uh, uh, implemented uh, several uh, stringent uh, uh, reforms, no? Um, but, but more importantly, actually, you know, I, I like the, you're very charming today. So uh, we will share a little bit, you know, actually this uh, ev- evolving uh, landscape gives the Filipino, the enterprising Filipinos opportunities, no? So, uh, okay, we'll give, we'll give uh, uh, inside tip, no? So one example that we can do is Filipinos can organize uh, uh, education tours, right? Uh, so instead of mm-hmm. the, the Chinese kids uh, doing the online classes there, you know, they can visit here uh, when things are opened up and the situation allows. And uh, we, we, we can actually uh, bring the students here and teacher Luke John will, will have uh, not only an education company, but a tourism company. And uh, there's a lot of young, I, I see the names, there are a lot of young teachers here and also ch- uh, Filipinos in China. They can be our uh, uh, bridge, no? They, they can be the mm-hmm. one to market in, in China to, to provide the uh, Filipino uh, Filipino made uh, education packages. And I, I believe there's a big uh, potential there as the economy opens up, as long as we don't now, get more. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, that, that's something that we should not um, even think about. But, you know, Anna, uh, one parent here is actually asking a very nice question. Um, do you think the policy will have an adverse effect to the Chinese students' competitiveness and skills given their high ranking globally? Because you mentioned earlier, um, Austin, you said like China, even though you know how you have this policy at the moment, trying being constrained in terms of teaching English. But still, if you look at the global ranking, the Chinese is on the top, even in English. So right now, the question is, in what sense this will impact? that kind of competitiveness the Chinese students, you know, possess in, in that sense. If, if you don't have English teachers there teaching English or ed tech will not, be, uh, will not have that, you know, leeway of extending that kind of education to, to the children, you know, especially from kindergarten to high school. So, yeah, that's the question of Mr. Well, that's my husband, John Lawrence Uwe. Well, like he said, the Chinese students are, you know, competitive and skilled. And knowing my students and their parents, they will find a way, mm-hmm. find a way to keep things the same, <laughs> right? No matter what, that's how they dedicated they are. They are to that's their how education. competitive they are. Yeah. Yes. What about you, Austin? In what sense it will affect the global competitiveness of Chinese students? No, being on top of the ranking globally. I echo uh, teacher John. Uh, to add also, you know, China's um, education policy, uh, they're also looking at, uh, you know, starting at the elementary, uh, before they enter high school, they're going to uh, uh, identify the kids for vocational uh, direction and uh, liberal uh, studies direction uh, because the government wants more uh, vocational and technical skills. Um, so so uh, I think they're following the Germany model. So of course, English is still the, 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 the top uh, of mind for the parents, uh, for their kids. But a lot of these, um, uh, you know, YouTube or, or their, their, their version of YouTube already offers these uh, on- online uh, uh, English programs. So I, I think I agree with teacher John, the, the, the Chinese parents, the tiger moms will definitely find a way. <laughs> Yes, I think so. I mean, I can relate to the moms, no, um, of, of trying to make their kids very, very competitive. Okay, before I let you go, both of you, I have last question, sorry. In what sense do you think APU can possibly continue its work in terms of Philipp- promoting Philippine-China relations and even in, in this field, no? In what sense? Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe more, more, uh, more forums like this, 
would definitely help. Uh, totally uh, echo uh, teacher John. Actually, you know, this, this kind of stories, uh, because a lot of our uh, webinars sometimes or our uh, experts, uh, they, they, they want the country to focus on the political, uh, mm -hmm. which, which is important, no? or, or, or the disputes. But uh, this actually, this people to people, and, and we know for the past uh, thousand years, the people to people relationship has uh, made uh, both countries, both peoples uh, flourish and benefit on the trade, uh, economic, but also in the cultural and the people to people level. So uh, thank you very much. I think this kind of uh, webinars should be more uh, promoted and, and APCO is uh, an important uh, pillar in this regard.